Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless deception has been a problem for man since the serpent first deceived eve in the garden as we read in genesis 3:13. and the lord god said to the woman what is this you have done the woman said the serpent deceived me and i ate jesus when responding to the disciples question about a second coming in the end of the age warned them repeatedly about deception he indicated that deception would be a serious problem in the last days and that many people would fall, as we read in Matthew 24, verses 5, 11, 24, and 25. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Deception is ever present, but the days are coming and have come when most people will be deceived. Deception will continue to increase until the day of the Lord and the return of Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 3, 1-13 But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jans and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be made manifest to all, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Just three days since dodging an assassin's bullet, the former president's expected to make an appearance tonight, and if it's anything like last night, it'll be special. Please welcome the next president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Last night, Trump was visibly changed, and it wasn't just a bandage on his ear. He looked genuinely emotional, vulnerable in a way I've never seen him before. Matured, battle-scarred, humbled, and at one with his destiny. And although the party is completely unified, there's one burning question on all of our minds. Did Biden's Secret Service almost get Trump killed? All evidence points to yes. We're told tonight that U.S. authorities had intel of an Iranian plot to assassinate Trump. CNN reports that Secret Service knew it and beefed up security ahead of his Saturday rally. If you believe this report, that means the security Trump had on Saturday was beefed up. Impossible. Credible reports say Trump's security detail was starved of manpower. Agents were reportedly diverted to a hastily arranged small Jill Biden event in Pittsburgh at the same exact time as Trump's rally. Huh. And Kamala happened to be in Pennsylvania that day, too. The Secret Service denies resources were diverted, but reports say they were stretched so thin, they only had two counter snipers for the rally, two, and they had to farm out the rest of the protection to local stringers. The Secret Service director, Cheadle, said the assassin's rooftop was a vulnerability, 
but they decided to place counter snipers inside the building instead. Here's why. Should that roof have been secure, period? That building in particular has a, a sloped roof uh, at its highest point. Um, and so, you know, there's a safety factor that would be con considered there that we wouldn't want to put somebody up on a sloped roof. Uh, and so, you know, the decision was made to secure the building uh, from inside. We have American snipers shooting from caves, cliffs, mountaintops, but they can't handle a sloped roof. She put counter snipers behind Trump on a roof that was even more sloped. Look at that. The sloped roof excuse is a hoax. What good are counter snipers inside a building if they can't see an assassin scale the building? The roof wasn't too dangerous for the assassin. He didn't slide off. He got eight shots off. CNN reports they didn't even have drones in the sky. Emma's birthday party had a drone. And I don't have a $3 billion budget like Cheadle. But never mind the drone. The shooter was spotted acting suspicious by men on the ground a half an hour before he opened fire. Sources tell Fox that the shooter was seen with a range finder casing the stage. CNN says he locked eyes with one of the snipers through the range finder. Multiple reports say authorities were radioing the Secret Service about a suspicious individual, even sending pictures of him. And nothing was done about it. And they let Trump take the stage and remain on it. How does the Secret Service get outfoxed for half an hour by a kid with no military training? CBS reports Crooks disappeared and was later seen with a backpack. And the story keeps changing about the latter. Now the media is reporting that Crooks used an air conditioning unit to hop atop the 12-foot building. So where's the five-foot ladder that he says he bought? And were police wearing body cams? Because we'd like to see those. CNN said he drove his Hyundai Sonata and parked it outside the rally, so why did they tow away a big conversion van? How does a soft civilian with a rifle get on the roof of a Secret Service watch post and almost murder the president? We're also learning tonight that Crooks' father called 911 just after Trump got shot. How did the dad immediately know his son was the shooter? And why did the Secret Service announce Crooks acted alone before they'd accessed his phone? How'd they know? We hear they're in his phone now, but they're not telling us anything. The assassin didn't text, didn't email, didn't have calls from anybody, had no Google search history, no social media footprint. Come on. The FBI covered up the trans shooter's motive, never ID'd the Vegas massacre motive, and called the Fort Hood shooting workplace violence. You think we're going to get a straight answer here? And with all these mysterious failures, Biden says he still has confidence in Cheadle but doesn't know Cheadle's a woman. Is it acceptable that you have still not heard, at least publicly, from the Secret Service director? Oh, I've heard from him. But have you heard from her publicly? Publicly. I've sat down in a situation room downstairs. The Secret Service, the FBI, the National Security Agencies, the Homeland Security, all the major elements. Sources close to the Biden family says Cheadle was well-liked by Dr. Jill after serving on her security detail, and that's how she got the job. This is your typical Biden family affair. Obama's Secret Service director resigned when a man with a knife jumped the White House fence. So is Cheadle just staying around to cover this up? We only get answers when she's out. And just breaking now, Dan Bongino reporting that Secret Service agents have been warned that if they want to keep their jobs, they'll keep their mouths shut. But instead of investigating the FBI's warning that Trump supporters are a threat, the Bureau says Trump supporters will probably avenge the assassination attempt and shoot somebody. Another Whitmer kidnapping setup? We don't know. The minute we stop asking questions, they win. Executive VP of the Trump Organization, Eric Trump's here. Eric, did you notice your dad a little changed last night? Yeah, there's no question. There was a humbleness. And, you know, it's honestly, I'm infuriated as I, as I just watch you go through this intro. I mean, my father almost lost his head because of that incompetence. Think about that excuse. Secret Service is incapable of walking up a roof that has narrow pitch. My four-year-old daughter could have walked up that roof, and they let a gunman at 130 yards, which is a chip shot. It's a four-inch putt take a shot at the former president of the United States. It's an act of God that he survived. It's an act of God that he survived. God just saved the life of Trump and Republicans have prayers to a false God. Isaiah 46, nine and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning 
and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Dear Waheguru, our one true God, Tu thakar tum payar das Jiyo pind sab teri ras Tum mat pita ham barak tere Tum ri kir pa masuk kanere Dear Waheguru, our one true God, we thank you for creating America as a unique haven on this earth where all people are free to worship according to their faith. We seek your blessings and guidance for our beloved country. Please bless our people with wisdom as they vote in the upcoming election, and please bless with humility, honesty, skill, and integrity all those who conduct the election. Finally, we thank you for the Chardli Kala spirit that we have witnessed in President Trump. That is, the tireless and uplifting, uplifting spirit that is sustained even in the face of violent adversity, like a founding father centuries ago. And we thank you, dear God, for protecting his life. We thank you for his examples of nirbha, fearlessness, and nirvair, the absence of hate when faced with vitriol. These examples of extraordinary calm inspire us. Nanak Nam Chardikala Terebane Sarbatapala. May your name forever be exalted, spreading happiness and blessings and good spirit, that everyone may prosper and enjoy the grace of your peace. Thank you. Republicans have betrayed the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this was a prayer to a demon. Wahigru is Sikhism, which is the fusing of Hinduism and Islam. While Sikhs may accept Jesus as a prophet, they believe that Jesus isn't God. John 14.6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Trump taking a fat sharpie to the Republican platform in Milwaukee, removing any mention of a national abortion ban, and making room to tolerate gay marriage. Monday, the RNC platform committee approved the party's platform before it heads to the convention floor next week. I think that from the historical perspective, a platform is very important. The platform highlights 20 issues, immigration, the economy, taxes, and crime. It does not include a national abortion ban, something many pro-life Republicans were counting on. It's very significant whenever a party does something that's sort of out of the ordinary. The platform reads in part, we will oppose late-term abortion while supporting mothers and policies that advance prenatal care, access to birth control, and IVF. UWM professor emeritus Mordecai Lee says it's vague. If you're the Republican Party and you want Donald Trump to win Wisconsin, <laughs> you want fuzziness. Tony Perkins, the president of the Family Research Council, calls the platform unbecoming. He says during Monday's meeting, delegates had no time to look it over before a vote was called. Jeremiah 18, 7 through 10. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. What does it mean to be a Republican in the year 2024? What does it mean to be an American in the year 2024? If you want to seal the border, vote Trump. If you want to restore law and order in this country, vote Trump. If you want to reignite the economy in this country, vote Trump. If you want to revive national pride in this country, vote Trump. If you want to make America great again, vote Trump. But there is one more reason I'm going to ask you to vote Trump, and it's the most important one. It's the one the media won't talk about, but it's the truth. Donald Trump is the president who will actually unite this country. We do not have to be ancient Rome. We don't have to be this nation in decline. We can still be a nation in our ascent. A nation whose best days, not in some fake politician way, but in a true way, a nation 
whose best days are actually still ahead of us. Jeremiah 8.11 For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. What does peace, peace, when there is no peace mean in Jeremiah 8.11? Jeremiah the prophet proclaimed that judgment was coming upon Jerusalem. However, Jeremiah was opposed by the king and the priests who did not want to hear his message. False prophets who claimed to speak for God also contradicted Jeremiah's message. Jeremiah proclaimed bloodshed, destruction, and judgment when Babylon conquered Jerusalem. The false prophets, on the other hand, said that the future of Jerusalem looked bright. Jerusalem could look forward to peace, not war. The phrase, peace, peace, when there is no peace, is found in Jeremiah 6.14 as well as Jeremiah 8.11. It is also found in Ezekiel 13.10 and 16. In all four places, it has the same meaning in the same historical context. Jeremiah was like a doctor delivering bad news to his patient, and his diagnosis was, unless drastic measures were taken, the patient would die. However, the false prophets gave a second opinion. Don't listen to Jeremiah, they said. You are going to be just fine. Instead of radical surgery and a drastic change of lifestyle, the priests and false prophets said a light bandage was all that was needed. The following passage is found in Jeremiah 6.13 and 14 and repeated in Jeremiah 8.10 and 11. Because from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. They have also healed the hurt of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. When the priests and false prophets said, Peace, peace, they were denying that judgment was on the way. They were giving the people false assurances. The explicit assumption is that Jerusalem and Judah had not committed grievous sins and that God was not displeased with them. In fact, according to the false prophets, God was quite happy with his people and wanted to bless them. They promised peace, peace. Unfortunately, their promised peace would not come. The book of Jeremiah bears this out and, in the end, Jerusalem was destroyed by Babylon, just as God had said. People like to hear good news, and they do not want to hear that God's judgment is coming. The watchmen of our time have the job of delivering that bad news. God bore witness against the people to whom Isaiah was sent to minister, calling them rebellious people, deceitful children, children unwilling to listen to the Lord's instruction, as we read in Isaiah 39 that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children who will not hear the law of the Lord. Such people have closed their ears to the word of the Lord and desire to hear only peace, even when there is no peace. They say to God's prophets, Give us no more visions of what is right. Tell us pleasant things. Prophesy illusions. Stop confronting us with the Holy One of Israel. As we read in Isaiah 30, 10, and 11, who says to the seers, do not see, and to the prophets, do not prophesy to us right things, speak to us smooth things, prophesy deceits, get out of the way, turn aside from the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Just as Jeremiah the prophet proclaimed the judgment was coming upon Jerusalem, the watchmen of our time are warning of God's soon coming judgment on a wicked and unrepentant world. Are you listening? These terrible judgments are pictured as seven seals opened, seven trumpets blown, and seven bowls poured out. The first four of the seven seals are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal and the white horse rides, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal and the red horse rides, war will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the third seal and the black horse rides, famine will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the fourth seal and the pale horse rides, death and Hades will be unleashed. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was death, and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion 
meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. When the fifth seal is broken, those who have been slain for the word of God and their testimony will be given white robes and told to rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. When the sixth seal is broken, there will be a great earthquake. The sun will become black as sackcloth of hair and the moon like blood and the stars of heaven will fall to the earth. When the seventh seal is broken, there will be silence in heaven for about a half an hour. After seven seals are opened, seven trumpets are blown. When the first angel sounds, vegetation is struck. Hail and fire mingled with blood will be thrown to the earth and a third of the trees and all the green grass will be burned up. When the second angel sounds, the seas are struck. Something like a great mountain burning with fire is thrown into the sea, which seems to be a meteor causing a third of the sea to become blood and a third of the living creatures in the sea to die and a third of the ships to be destroyed. When the third angel sounds, the waters are struck. A great star falls from heaven, burning like a torch on the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood, and a third of the waters become Wormwood, and many men will die from the water, because it will be made poisonous. When the fourth angel sounds, the heavens are struck. A third of the sun is struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them are darkened. A third of the day will not shine, and likewise the night. When the fifth angel sounds, Satan is cast down from heaven to release demons from the bottomless pit to torment those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads for five months. When the sixth angel sounds, a demonic army numbering 200 million will kill a third of mankind. Four billion people have now died at this time, equaling half of the world's population. When the seventh angel sounds, the temple of God is opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant is seen in his temple and there are lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. After seven trumpets have sounded, seven bowls are poured out. When the first angel pours out his bowl, a foul and loathsome sore will come upon the men who have the mark of the beast, and those who worship his image. When the second angel pours out his bowl on the sea, it will become blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea will die. When the third angel pours out his bowl, the rivers and springs of water will become blood. When the fourth angel pours out his bowl on the sun, power is given to him to scorch men with fire, and men are scorched with great heat. When the fifth angel pours out his bowl on the throne of the beast, his kingdom becomes full of darkness, and they will gnaw their tongues because of the pain. When the sixth angel pours out his bowl, it results in the Euphrates River being dried up, and the armies of the Antichrist being gathered together to wage the battle of Armageddon. When the seventh angel pours out his bowl, a loud voice comes out of the temple of heaven, from the throne saying, it is done. A devastating earthquake flattening everything on planet earth followed by giant hailstones weighing 100 pounds each completes the seal, trumpet, and bold judgments. God's judgment against this wicked and unrepentant world will leave no doubt as to his wrath against sin. Yet there will still be people blaspheming God and not repenting and giving him glory. Revelation 16 9 And men were scorched with great heat and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues and they did not repent and give him glory. Revelation 16.21 And great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. 
Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.